I'd like to give the floor to Mr. Stelios Grigorakis, who is uh, this, who comes from ESO General and who will talk to us about breastfeeding problems and uh, thy the thyroid. We know how important the thyroid is in all the changes taking place during um, both gestation and lactation. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, the distinguished colleagues and the organizing committee on this conference. We promote natural labor and breastfeeding. We are supporters of those two experiences. Maybe we are the only hospital in Crete providing lessons of breastfeeding and uh, painless labor. Every Wednesday in the afternoon for both uh, mothers and their fa husbands. And the percentages of uh, normal label are very high on the island. So I thank the pediatricians and everybody who has been supporting our work. Mr. Grigorakis, you have the floor. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Before I start my speech and inspired by the previous uh, debate, I'd like to say that a few days ago, uh, Asima Lorta, who is a distinguished cardiologist, spoke about the problems created in medicine in general due to the irrational use of uh, medicines. Uh, he spoke, he delivered a speech at the European Parliament and he said that uh, honest and good doctors rather find it very difficult to conduct, to perform their task in an honest way nowadays, even honest doctors. Anyway, this shows something, and this is indeed very important. Let us now shift to some more. I hope not boring things. Anyway, uh, it is interesting to see that 10% uh, of women following uh, birth uh, uh, manifest uh, thyroid disorders. Many doctors don't know. Many endocrinologists uh, don't know. They are not experts in breastfeeding. They don't have the necessary knowledge and they often uh, suggest, uh, ask women to uh, stop breastfeeding. The literature, medical literature, is still deficient. So it is no surprise, it comes as no surprise, that several women find it difficult to breastfeed or even impossible because of thyroid problems. Let's see how the illnesses of the thyroid may affect uh, breastfeeding. S a few things about the thyroid, for I imagine that uh, many of you are not very familiar. The thyroid gland is in the cervix. This is uh, where it is located. It uh, resembles a butterfly. Now, palpitation. Pulp, uh. So, touching the thyroid and testing it like that. This is the case. Uh, the follicles, uh, the thyroid follicles. Uh, containing a substance uh, and in those follicles the thyroid hormones uh, are being uh, stored. Thyroxine, T4, T4 and T3, which is even more active than thyroxine. So T4 and T3, that's the one doing the job, T3, and the thyroid gland uh, even even T4 at a certain point is uh, translated into T3 with the help of some enzymes. For the thyroid gland to successfully operate and to produce its hormones, uh, it needs uh, uh, Iodium 
it, through, it, it, in, it introduces in the cells uh, sodium, natrium, and iodium. Sodium and iodium. Uh, this is how T4 and T3 uh, is being produced. Uh, this is the process that is being followed, uh, the uh, process of uh, synthesis of uh, thyroid hormones. T4 and T3 are being produced like that. The thyroid hormones uh, may reach the pituitary gland or the hypophysis and uh, send a message. And then a peptide is produced uh, through the hypothalamus of the brain. Uh, giving the order to the thyroid to produce such hormones or giving the order to stop producing the hormones when the hormones are enough in the body. So this is an ongoing process and this is a process we endocrinologists take into serious, into serious consideration when studying certain cases. This is a balanced thyroid, a normal thyroid function, a balance uh, between T4 and T3. Uh, those two hormones uh, tell the TSH to remain stable, to preserve this balanced level. This is a system in balance, a balanced system. Another important thing, which is inextricably linked to the breasts, is the activity of the thyroid hormones, uh, the levels of them, the levels and two other factors. The first factor is the deiodization of uh, hormones. Uh, hormones reach the tissue and then tissues and then there are some uh, enzymes uh, some that help. But maybe this situation, there are times when this situation is reversed. It depends on the enzymes that are present on the tissue. So you may have uh, either an action or a, the neutralization of the action. A second factor are the receptors. The four receptors, depending on the receptor, there may be the activation or the neutralization of the hormones. There are two big categories of thyroid disorders functional and anatomical, the hyper, hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism, uh, and thyroidism. Then uh, with reference to anatomy, we have hernias, some um, cysts, uh, cancer, and other problems, nodules, that is. With reference to functional illnesses, we usually ask for those exams, TSH, FT4, FT3, TPO, and ITG. And uh, with reference to the uh, other types of illnesses, we ask for the ultrasound and uh, a follow-up when we have some nodules that may appear a bit suspicious. Now the disorders in general, the functional ones. This is hypothyroidism. See that 
there is an engrossment here. This means that the pituitary gland takes the message through the blood that the thyroid is not in the position to produce the hormones. This is the typical model of biochemical exams of uh, hypothyroidism. Then in hyperthyroidism, we have a different situation, which we will see later. The symptoms of hypothyroidism, feeling tired, feeling cold, a slow heart rate, increase in weight, in weight. hair loss, depressed feelings, hoarse voice, and some bowel problems, constipation. Uh, in hyperthyroidism, we have an increase in the production of hormones. They go to the pituitary gland and they say, we don't need TSH, and TSH drops. So that's the balance getting lost. No, hyperthyroidism has the following symptoms, feeling warm, shortness of breath, loss of muscular strength, some menstrual complaints, some diarrhea, rapid heartbeat and weight loss. Rapid heartbeat and weight loss are the most common symptoms. Let's now go to thyroid issues following birth. Women are more affected by those issues, 7.5%, whereas men, 1.5%. Uh, after birth, after labor, 10% for women. And they appear during the first year. So we need to bear in mind that symptoms are quite uh, mild at times and gradual, so a bit of fatigue, some uh, emotional instability, uh, some depression, and we may think that this is because of the baby and uh, the, fa the, the, the fatigue, but uh, there is a close connection between such uh, problems and breastfeeding. So in general, hyper and hypothyroidism do the following. They prevent uh, the natural flow of milk. Uh, uh, hypothyroidism reduces the response of oxytocin. Hyperthyroidism um, changes the um, position of milk in the breasts. Uh, it reduces, it alters the, the quality of milk and uh, it uh, uh, changes the metabolism of uh, the lipids in the liver and uh, in the breasts. Uh, and it also affects the hormones that are related to uh, breastfeeding. Uh, we star rats uh, show that, experiments show that. And thyroid uh, diseases uh, um, alter insulin resistance. So both uh, hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism may be linked to insulin resistance and therefore create issues in breastfeeding. Uh, hypothyroidism in pregnancy, if in pregnancy, reduces the growth of uh, mm, breasts and during lactation it reduces oxytocin uh, and uh, the production of milk as well as the uh, fat contained in it. Hypothyroidism uh, leads to an early onset uh, uh, of uh, the reduction of milk because it inhibits PRL and uh, there may be a connection to uh, cancer, breast cancer. What I have been saying uh, it has been uh, proven has, is true for um, animals. Here are the medicines, the drugs that we usually administer in hyper, hypothyroidism. Synthroid, 
No dosage varies. What to choose? What are the uh, normal levels of TSH? Uh, there is a lot of confusion. People who really know uh, personalize the therapies administered depending on the needs of the woman, depending, depending on the specificities of the case. Whether thyroxine goes into the breast milk? Well, in September 1994, an answer was provided. No, it doesn't go. It goes a bit, a very minor quantity. but uh, really minor and uh, har harmless, insignificant. Uh, but anyway, it is interesting to see that the question dates back to the 40s. So hypothyroidism reduces uh, the production of milk and the supply of milk. Hypothyroidism is not f harmful uh, per se for the baby, uh, hypothyroidism per se. Uh, the dosage for thyroxine, 1% of the daily dose may go to the breast milk, uh, but um, the pro real problem is that some issues are not being diagnosed soon enough. Hyperthyroidism uh, during uh, gestation, it leads to a major growth of breast. Uh, an early onset of lactogenesis, reduction of oxytocin, and um, painful uh, engrossment of the breasts, uh, depending also on the position of, uh, of the milk uh, inside the breast. Uh, but what is interesting about hyperthyroidism and lactation is the following. You may have either hyperthyroidism and have both uh, a bigger supply of milk and a reduced supply of milk. So the, this needs to be further uh, assessed and studied. So because it may depend on the time of onset of uh, the hyperthyroidism or on the severity of the hyperthyroidism. According to the 88 guidelines, there are no such da data saying that therapy of hyperthyroidism will improve the quality of breastfeeding. So uh, giving a uh, medicine, administering a medicine during lactation doesn't necessarily mean that uh, uh, the milk will improve. The situation of the mother will improve, but the milk won't necessarily improve. What is the therapy of uh, hyperthyroidism? During gestation and breastfeeding, we usually opt for PTU, thyrostat, unimazole, and for a definitive therapy, uh, iodium, therapeutic iodium, or a section surgery. But I never recommend something like that uh, to breastfeeding mothers. So we saw in the history of ATDs in lactation that uh, as if it was a certain curse, you had uh, women who had hyperthyroidism had to stop uh, lactation if she needed to be administered with a certain treatment. In the 1980s, we saw the introduction of PDUs where it seemed that it was not, not dangerous for women. So yes, uh, a breastfeeding mother could actually continue the breastfeeding process. Still in 2000, so we have the MMIs, and then in 2011, we have the, the new guidelines. We have received from the ATA. And in 2017, it seems that women can be administered with such pills, and of course, they can continue breastfeed. Now, anti-theroid drugs in breast milk. This is MMI, uh, 40 milligrams per day, the dosage scheme. This is a maximum dose, actually. Let's see the quantity in breast milk for an infant of four kilos. We see 70 micrograms, while well, this is 40 milligrams. So you see that's a huge, huge difference. 
So it's the equivalent of 1.2 milligrams into an adult. And see what happens with PTU, 200 milligrams, three times this, we have 149 micrograms to the infant. So it has to do also, this, we have checked all possible control, but the size, the weight, the IQ of the, of the newborn, of course, no consequences upon the use of anti So The question is, should we check and have a medical test for children for thyroid? Now, different guidelines. The guideline says that a child should not be checked. Sometimes we might do so. But generally speaking, uh, there's no reason. Um, so we see that there are the maximum dose uh, that is to be administered to women, which is one hour for these drugs and one and a half hours for after the uh, PTU. And it seems after that period, it is better for mothers to breastfeed. Now, what are the adverse effects of these drugs to mothers, but generally speaking to the general population? These are the more minor ones, arthritis, some allergic reactions on the skin, and stomach ache. These are the more rare ones, but of course more uh, adverse effects, polyatric syndrome and hepatitis. But we're dealing with very, very rare cases of adverse side effects. It is, it's, I had only seen such a case once since 1986. Now, talking about thyroiditis now, post uh, uh, pregnancy now, let's see what is this type of thyroiditis. Uh, it is any dysfunction living aside graves. So uh, it happens after the first year of uh, delivering the baby. So we're dealing with uh, uh, these uh, women are positive to thyroid. Uh, and of course, it's an autoimmune inflammation. And it has to do with a great number of anti-TPO and anti-TG antibodies. And uh, compared to the different countries, you see the difference of the consequences of thyroid Thyroiditis, you see Great Britain 16.7% the prevalence, whereas in Thailand is only 1.1% the prevalence. So we see great differences. So let's see how this disease uh, might uh, occur. And this is also um, important for neurologists. The typical form is to have a period of hyperthyroid and a period of hyperthyroid. So we see. Uh, how this might change. But it, it, it seems to be uh, uh, seen only in cases of hyperthyroid. Uh, we see that it, the onset is on the first six months. So when you have the hyperthyroidism, How can we have the uh, difference between graves, which is the most common uh, disease? First, period of onset, which is much early. After six months, uh, uh, six and a half months, we might have uh, the graves disease. Now, the ratio between T4 to T3 is higher. In graves, there are some other symptoms, as uh, eye uh, syndrome, but the most uh, important uh, test that you should run, uh, which might demand a chronic uh, administration of drugs, uh, that is why it is uh, it is very important. You could say that in some case you might need uh, the iodine um, administration. But of course, this is rather rare, and of course, outside and after the period of lactation. Now, in the clinical endocrinology, we saw a study in 2016 which compared uh, the difference between grace and hyperthyroid. 
If we see the clinical data, if uh, we have the thyroiditis after the, uh, that period, we might have an interval, in other words, a beta, beta blocker in order to stop uh, uh, this heart, palpitation of uh, heart. So if we have the Graves' uh, um, uh, disease, you might need to administer PTU. Uh, but of course, the dosage seems to be less than 300 milligrams, or MMI is between 20 to 30 milligrams. But still recently, Many technologies believe that we should prioritize PTU at less than 300 milligrams, but still, I don't believe this is absolutely correct. We should also control and cross-check women who have a higher prevalence to uh, expect thyroiditis, where, of course, yes, uh, we might see some uh, comorbidities which might lead to this disease. We should see equally whether there was such a historic in the family where there's a higher antibodies during the first period of uh, uh, the period. And of course, normally now women are checked for thyro thyroiditis. Uh, and of course, symptoms of depression also need to be checked because they might be correlated with hypothyroid. Now, let's go on with uh, iodine and the use of iodine. Now, breastfeeding women have great need of iodine, especially because they need to administer iodine to the newborn, so they lose iodine, so they have a lesser quantity. Um, and of course, we also, it has been said that uh, in case of lack of iodine to children, uh, mental health might be used. And of course, we have the use, uh, we have uh, the iodine via salt. So yes, uh, this could be useful, but not all people uh, use salt. It seems that in 30 different countries, there is an inefficiency of iodine. Belgium, Czech Republic, uh, Denmark, France, uh, Norway, Spain, England. It is an easy treatment that we can actually use iodine during uh, uh, breastfeeding. 400 milligrams uh, orally uh, per day can cover the iodine quantities needed for children and mother. So it is much better to do that via mother and not to the newborn. So there's no need to administer uh, iodine to uh, women who already took thyroxine. Or let's avoid having this uh, uh, overdose. More than 500 milligrams per day, for example, might create the phenomenon of Wolf Tchaikov. So this is the, uh, uh, the overdose scheme that we need to avoid. Now, the human health has identified a body to be covered in iodine reception through the Wolf-Chaiko phenomenon. In other words, uh, when there is an overconsumption of iodine, we start, the, the body itself stops the production of these hormones. So we manage to establish a balance. Iodine can also uh, be iodine through drugs, uh, by antiseptics, uh, even during an operation. So we need to be very vigilant of what type of iodine we might administer. So the concentration of iodine in milk has a great extent between 5.4 to 2.170 micrograms per liter. So we see that's a lack of homeostasis. So there's no uh, introduction and no issue in this to be issued. But of course, we need to understand that we have the same pump of iodine uh, reception. But in this case, uh, we cannot protect uh, uh, the breast from such overdose. So that's why iodine has a great importance itself in the physiology of breastfeeding. So we might have some failures in terms of, of uh, lactation in stem cells. So this is something that uh, we should administer with great vigilance. So this is the dosage scheme for iodine, the guidelines by IOM, the Institute of Medicine, and of course WHO. Uh, before pregnancy, 150 micrograms per day. During pregnancy, 200 to 20 micrograms per day, whereas WHO says 250 micrograms per day. And of course, we should also calculate what you receive from many different uh, supplements, uh, by food,
And now let's talk about the thyroid medications and mother's milk, uh, the Thomas Hale uh, research, who actually uh, has uh, classified uh, medicines uh, as far as the risk. And we see that the two MMIs and uh, PTU in 2010 were qualified as uh, L3, in other words, more risky or dangerous, but now they are classified as L2 for propanol and MMI. But these drugs are a little bit higher because it seems that uh, there is a greater hepatotoxicity. So in order to avoid such risks, we opt uh, for propanol and MMI. I said earlier where the newborn should be controlled for hypothyroidism after the birth, whether women receive an anti-thyroid treatment or not. Now, when a newborn is uh, born, they are checked and controlled in case of hypothyroidism, but of course it should be done at the appropriate moment, three to five days after the birth, because during 24, 24 hours we might have some erroneous results. So we need to wait until the third to fifth day. But in a routine uh, uh, check, uh, such a control should not be uh, conducted. Let's now see some other issues so related to cancer uh, during breastfeeding. And then, of course, we need to have some uh, other um, medical tests that we need to run and whether these medical tests can be run during breastfeeding. So diagnosis is based on that, which, of course, is not absolute, but still, um, in some of the cases when this is needed, I believe we can administer uh, technetium. So we expect that during on that day, during the day, maybe uh, milk should be extracted. So if it is iodine 123, yes, breastfeeding can be continued but it should be extracted via pump. That is why I'm referring to the utilization of pump. But what is not consulted is the iodine 131 whenever you uh, breastfeed, because the uh, median life of iodine 133, 31, I'm sorry, is eight days. Now, the therapeutic iodine for cancers is not uh, advised. So let me finish now with a quiz. This is an image uh, I showed yesterday. Difficulties uh, in breastfeeding. Is there a question of a woman contracting uh, a thyroid disease? The, so can we have this? Uh, can we have this issue with polycystic uh, uh, ovaries? So we should control uh, metathyroiditis. We might have this uh, polycystic ovaries. Uh, this is something that we know. So indeed, if anyone has such a case, then this uh, is a disease that we need to control. Quiz number two. Uh, we have a great concentration of milk, difficulties in breastfeeding, hyperthyroidism since the 18th week of pregnancy what this could be. TSH, which is uh, low, and it is regulated. So this woman is not well regulated. She needs a better regulation. And last question, last quiz. Women 36 years old, hyperthyroidism, other drugs, uh, ferrum and calcium, difficulties in breastfeeding. What this might be, quite easy. TSH 5.2, low D vitamin, and lack of vitamin D. So in this case, we would have a better dosage scheme of thyroxine. So to conclude, now these phenomena are not rare after delivering a baby. And of course, the symptoms uh, are rather minimal. But of course, the thyroid uh, dysfunction might affect especially the flow of milk and not the production itself. Uh, early prevention might, of course, help women continue breastfeeding. All drugs are, of course, very safe. The only one we should exclude is iodine-131. 
So the technology should finally intensify research on humans for more information. As Zhang Frank Zappa said, the brain is like um, uh, it works whenever it's open. So we need to have open-minded people. Thank you very much. I believe that you have solved, you have un answered the questions of many about medicine. There is time for one or two questions, if any. Apparently, yes. Off the microphone. Often we see problems with the reduced production of milk in the first month. This is what women say. And uh, most experts give no peridone to increase milk. What would your advice be? Should there be a screening on the thyroid, of the thyroid, before no peridone? I believe, yes, that there should be a check because the whole issue should be dealt with. No peridone is one of the, of the last things one should do. But there are even other experts who could, who, who could provide an answer. Good afternoon. Congratulations on your speech. Uh, working with women uh, who uh, gave birth and uh, have been faced with thyroid disorders, every time I ask them, have you spoken to your endocrinologist, uh, they answer, the endocrinologist said that I should call him back after one month. Uh, so, all doctors tell them, uh, let's talk in about a month, in about a month, in about a month. Do you think that this is a uh, Correct. All women I have spoken to said that. So, what do you think? Both the gynecologist and the endocrinologist ask them to get back to him after a month. Well, this is quite general. You can't tell all women uh, get back to me after a month. Some women who get a specific... It may not be necessary to see someone before, but uh, to verify the dosage, whether the dosage is good or not, well, you may need an exam. So you, you, it, it, that requires six weeks. So even if you can perform certain results 15 days after the birth, you get no information. So this is a very general comment. I don't really think it is that important. I mean, even if uh, a higher dosage of uh, drug is administered, it won't harm. I mean, it, it's not going to harm her or the baby. It depends. It depends on the case. If uh, uh, the woman is uh, following a therapy, then four to six weeks are okay. And if there is a problem in the th in lactation, if uh, a medicine is administered, then it shouldn't be a problem. Thyroid shouldn't be a problem. The problem should be of a different nature. Thank you for your speech. I have a question about thyroiditis. When a woman is in, uh, in hyperthyroidism with intense uh, clinical symptoms, why don't you cover her? Because hyperthyroidism in thyroiditis is different. Uh, the parenchyma is destroyed in that case. We're talking about a hormone storage, and such hormones go into the blood, and the blood is filled with such hormones. Antithyroid medicines that we have um, inhibit production. So even if you administer such drugs, nothing will happen. And what can we give a woman 
that may be faced with such a situation. Beta blockers to avoid uh, tachycardia. The, the problem is to diagnose. If you diagnose, then the therapy is quite simple. We know that uh, for the breast milk to be rich in iodine, uh, we need 250 microgram of iodine daily during gestation and breastfeeding. We know also that if a woman uh, eats two portions of uh, fat, uh, fatty fish per week, then she is covered because she receives the necessary amount of iodine. Is that true? But in case, in a culture like ours, in case, in a family like most of today's families, where fish is not very frequent, should they take an iodine supplement? Because when I teach lactation, I tell them that during gestation, they should also take a, a supplement, multivitamin supplement. If this woman doesn't eat bread and doesn't eat salt and doesn't eat fish, then yeah, there will be a problem. But if, because there is salt, uh, there is iodine in salt, uh, but most multivitamin vitamins that are being administered during gestation and breastfeeding, there is iodine, but very few people administer multivitamins. I think many of them give pregnant care or breastfeeding vitamins. It's not reliable to uh, assess iodine in the urine of a, of a day. So, I mean, it will not be easy to judge. So, a balanced nutrition is, of course, also of paramount importance. Then I read that in Thailand uh, they have 1.5% of uh, thyroidism, whereas in the UK, 16%. I recently read that when we have a uh, niodine deficiency, the autoimmune thyroiditis may be triggered. No, on the contrary, I would say, excess of iodine leads to, may lead to autoimmune thyroiditis. Any further questions? Thank you very much, Mr. Grigorakis.